Welcome back. We are in conversation with the Executive Director of M&M, Dr. Pavan Goenka. Dr. Goenka, uh, we are seeing now increased competition in your bread and butter segment. We've been seeing this for quite some time now. And, and in April to July, we also see a marginal drop in your market share vis-a-vis -vis April to July last year. What is M&M trying to do to not only protect its turf, but also increase it from around 36% that it is currently in the UV segment. Well, Aranada, as uh, we have been saying for some time that uh, the UV segment uh, has really been redefined in two distinct segments. Uh, the traditional UV is uh, the kind that Mahindra has, has been making and has been has had very high market share in and the new sort of crossover uh, kind of UVs and where we have do not have a strong product. Mm -hmm. uh, we would be launching products in this segment soon. Uh, our TUV 300 is a small compact uh, uh, SUV uh, product uh, that will be coming out uh, uh, just around the corner now. S101 will be coming out a little bit uh, uh, later uh, in, in, in the year. So, so when do we firstly see the official launch of the TUV and secondly in the short run looking at the looking at the condition of the market can you give us like uh, the sort of sales volumes that that you would want your team to deliver? Well, uh, the the TUV 300 launch is slated for September 10th, uh, so just around the corner now. Uh, it's uh, these days very hard to predict uh, what uh, the volume will be. Uh, uh, there are many many launches, uh, some very successful, some couldn't really strike that that excitement. Uh, I hope that we are in the first category and not the second. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll have to wait and see. We've worked hard at this product. Uh, it takes four years, thousand crores to develop a new product, uh, grand, brand new product. So how much have you invested? About, about thousand odd crores? Roughly, roughly about about thousand crore. Uh, depends on what also what all you include or not include. Mm -hmm. uh, so roughly about thousand crore, uh, 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 and most of it goes into the tooling uh, and setting up the plant uh, for the for the new product. We'll give out all those details when we launch the product. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that roughly. And and you're hoping that this is also going to uh, increase your market share from the 36% level or so, uh, as you said, considering absolutely. you're entering absolutely. a new segment. Absolutely. So, so uh, we believe that the volume that we will get uh, for this product will largely be new volume for us and not coming out from our existing products. Uh, and therefore, whatever volume it is, uh, will, be, will be giving us growth and therefore market share. So let's talk a little bit also about diesel vehicles, because once again, we are seeing this whole debate about uh, how whether it's polluting or not polluting and the general consensus seems to be that it is polluting. We've seen the National Green Tribunal also stepping in with 10-year-old diesel vehicles. As the market leader in diesel vehicles, when we think of diesel vehicles, we think of M&M. Firstly, what are you doing to dispel those notions, number one? And number two, how are you going to address this, this sort of this anti-diesel uh, sort of mindset environment that we are sort of witnessing right now? Well, there are certain arguments uh, that never die. Uh, and diesel being one of those, uh, which uh, since the time that I have been in this industry, uh, uh, I've been uh, uh, hearing that and participating in that debate whether di diesel is good or bad. Uh, the fact is that there are pluses and minuses. Uh, we know that well. We have talked about it. Sometimes minuses get talked about uh, disproportionately, unfortunately. Uh, but diesels are uh, diesel. Diesel fuel is the best fuel when it comes to uh, to, uh, to global global warming, climate change, uh, greenhouse gases. 20-25 uh, percent lower uh, than than equivalent petrol vehicle. That is well known, well established. And given that we are concerned about that, uh, that should also get some weight. Uh, it is true that diesels do emit higher PM compared to uh, petrol or CNG, but it's not true that diesel is the primary culprit uh, for the situation that we are in, mm -hmm. especially when we talk about BS4 vehicle, uh, both commercial and personal, and BS5 and BS6 that will happen in uh, four to eight years time. Uh, diesel, as far as PM is concerned, is is pretty good. I mean, a uh, lot of lot of effort has gone in technology. A uh, lot of money has gone into the uh, into, into the, the equipment uh, that is used to reduce uh, the PM and NOx emission from diesel. So I think one has to take a balanced view at it. Uh, I don't think it's a zero one uh, game. Uh, diesel have a place uh, place in the in the auto ecosystem. Uh, when it comes to commercial vehicle, there is no match for diesel. When it comes to personal vehicle, uh, and if you look at uh, the factor about what diesel means for uh, CO2 emission, and if you look at uh, 
the performance uh, that diesel gives you gives to the customer mm -hmm. uh, and if you look at the the sort of effect of that in terms of how diesel will help us to reduce uh, the the crude oil import which is not a small number it's it's a fairly large number that can uh, that can come in by by uh, use of diesel uh, diesel fuel then i think one has to balance out uh, what it means for for for, for pm emission uh, and work to uh, to to accelerate reduction of pm from where we are today and that can happen partly by bs5 coming in mm -hmm. and partly by uh, removing the older vehicles uh, from the from the roads uh, which perhaps emit uh, quite a quite a bit quite a high level of pms but, but also we should look at uh, what portion of pm contribution is coming from diesel vehicles it is very easy for uh, one to beat down on diesel vehicle but nobody is looking at uh, 80 90% of pm emission that is coming from sources other than diesel vehicles right but does it worry you that if such a mindset persists for a long time considering the courts are also not taking a view and taking a view against diesel that sooner rather than later your own products will be impacted so what is your strategy to uh, to sort of have a like to de-risk this business model well uh, while i firmly believe that uh, uh, diesel is unfairly blamed for many things at the same time we cannot discount uh, the possibility uh, that it may become more and more difficult uh, mm -hmm. to to sell diesel vehicles because of restrictions that may come in either through levy of taxes or through bans uh, that we are that we are seeing and therefore we have to have a petrol strategy there is no doubt about it and we have uh, strong line of a petrol engine that we are working on uh, the the s101 vehicle will be launched with a petrol vehicle uh, from from the word go a, a, a engine that we have developed uh, from ground up uh, uh, and then we are right now working on uh, larger uh, petrol engines we also have the synergy with sangyong uh, who has uh, they have a very good product lineup and and we'll be able to use some of their engines uh, directly on our vehicles as as time goes on so we will have to have as strong a petrol lineup as we have in terms of a diesel lineup uh, and and therefore we will not be too concerned mm -hmm. in terms of what might happen to our overall business mm -hmm. if the the sort of swing happens completely from diesel to petrol mm -hmm. okay uh, but i will still remain concerned that if that happens uh, we are uh, uh, killing a very good thing uh, because of a specific thing that gets talked about etc sometimes gets uh, unduly highlighted right so considering all your you, uh, your suvs are now diesel vehicles so in 5 years time what percentage of do you think in your suv portfolio will be diesel petrol in 5 years time any vehicle that we make will have a petrol option okay how much of it is diesel how much of it is petrol finally comes down to customer choice we are not going to dictate that that will be dictated by the customer about your two wheeler business dr goenka it's been about a little over a year since you've taken over that business as well for mnm what is mnm's differentiator in an overcrowded market that has already entrenched players how are you trying to sort of create a niche for yourself in that market well if you look at the two uh, products that we have the brand new product that we have done uh, the gusto scooter and the centuro motorcycle uh, what we have tried to do is uh, bring in uh, some technology uh, that does not exist even with the big size of the market that we have and very well entrenched powerful players in this uh, in this field uh, in 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 uh, gusto for example we have this height adjustable seat mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a simple feature but it's uh, almost like uh, something that uh, people with shorter uh, height uh, are are loving it uh, because because they don't feel like they have a disadvantage because they are they are short people and india does have enough short people uh, both men and women uh, and 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 with the new uh, uh, marketing campaign that we have done mm -hmm. uh, fairly aggressive uh, marketing campaign that is getting noticed now mm -hmm. uh, and we are getting very very good uh, inquiries on on gusto because of that that, that one feature in addition to that um, uh, and, and and when you come to centuro again uh, features that uh, for four wheeler manufacturers are uh, very normal things to do uh, were not available in two wheelers uh, the find me lamp uh, the the anti theft uh, the immobilizer as we know uh, so well in 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 four wheelers uh, we have brought that into two wheelers because of our knowledge uh, and familiarity with four wheeler mm -hmm. and uh, again uh, customers are liking that sort of uh, uniqueness uh, differentiator that we have so in a crowded field like this Mm -hmm. when somebody is coming out with a product that is giving you that uh, features that you don't otherwise get at the same price mm -hmm. i think that becomes a good value proposition mm -hmm. having said that it's taken us long to really make ourselves uh, uh, felt in 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 this segment uh, uh, and uh, hopefully with a very strong campaign that we have done uh, we begin to see some some traction happening 
and uh, it's uh, it's an industry where uh, it's going to take uh, some time for us to establish ourselves uh, uh, and and we started a little bit uh, late on our mm -hmm. new product the Centuro and Gusto but now I think I, I feel that we have reached a point where uh, uh, we should start seeing some and when do we see products with Peugeot being launched in India uh, we are looking at the possibility of that. Uh, again, it comes down to price positioning because the European products are very expensive uh, in India. That price positioning will not will not help. Uh, so we are looking to some of these products are very good and uh, they will be very attractive to the Indian consumer, provided we can bring it at a price point uh, that Indian consumer will like uh, will like to see. Can so we are working on it. So can we expect some product by the end of this financial year? By end of the financial year, very unlikely. Okay. Uh, very unlikely. Uh, but uh, in FY17, we should see something. Thank you so very much, Dr. Goenka. Always a pleasure to have you on CNBC TV. Certainly. Thank you so much. That was Dr. Pavan Goenka, Executive Director of M&M, in conversation with me. Until next time, thank you so very much for watching.